Hey guys, today we're looking at home espresso machines and the things you should be doing to your machine regularly so you can avoid um, breakdowns and expensive repair costs. So today we're in the service workshop um, here at Artisti and we've got a range of gear from commercial gear uh, in big coffee machines, high-end home machines, grinders, uh, the lot. And I really just wanted to take uh, the time to show you some things that happen uh, in here and what you can really do to care for your machine better um, and just the things that we communicate back to people after we've had a good look inside their machine. So the main thing that we have as an issue with all coffee machines is water. It's funny that they use water all the time, but it's the one thing that will always kill a coffee machine. So having a really good filter is a key to um, fixing that. Now we use 3M filters. Um, depending on where you are, every filter will do a different job. So the best thing is to do a water test and then work out what filter is going to attack the things that your local water has. So whether it's a double boiler linear mini, this one here has got a failed element. Once we open that up, we'll see a lot of um, build up inside there which has eaten away at the element and blown it. Um, your isomac, it's the same issue here. Um, the VBM, this had a, a pump and an element go together because they both had corrosion issues inside. Um, and this one here is a really prime result of just no filter at all. So a lot of people think they can get a small um, portable jug and use that kind of filter. It's just not strong enough to get everything out that we need. So if you're not going to invest in getting a good filter like this with a cartridge that you can put under your sink and then just take your water tank and fill it up, um, you need to do maybe buying a, a bottled water or something like that because it is going to kill a machine probably around year three, year four, um, and then you're going to be up for quite an expensive cost. Um, we might just zoom in a little bit close to this machine here to give you an idea, but when a boiler is working, you can see there'll be a line here of half water below and steam above. And what happens is, is we're producing steam all the time out for milk, but we're leaving water sitting in here. And it's just gonna get so many mineral, minerals and it's just gonna get a high concentration of those. And continually, we're just adding more water, but taking 100% steam out, leaving those minerals to sit and just corrode and oxidize around the actual fittings. So once these actually get blocked up in the arms, they will then go through, um, I guess like a cancer, all the way through a machine, blocking up your hot water tap, and blocking up your uh, your steamers. So at that point, we're, we're gonna get to um, that machine before it happens, not try and fix it afterwards. Um, we can fix it afterwards. It just costs a fair bit of money to be able to do all those things. So how can you avoid this specific issue? Um, these are HX machines, um, these three here. So essentially, um, it's a heat exchanger boiler. So this boiler is giving us the steam at the top, the water at the bottom, but there's a pass through here that's taking it through to the head. So a lot of people think the water that's coming out the head of a machine is the same as it's coming out a hot water tap, but it's not. It's just a vessel to be able to heat cold water as it's passing through. So the best thing I can, I can say to help this, if you're not filtering water or if you are, it really, it doesn't matter, but what you've got to do is you've got to use your hot water tap. And what that's going to do is empty all of that water out regularly and then replenish every time you turn your machine back on to give you fresh water again. So it's pretty common when you've um, uh, used your machine, uh, you might want to turn it off. So it's a bit of a de debate whether you leave that on or off uh, over a whole day. Um, I tend to leave mine on all the time because I use them throughout the whole day. Um, if you leave a machine on, it will actually keep the seals um, a bit better rather than um, heating and contracting all the time. Um, but there are a few other things that will wear out a little bit quicker. So if you are going to turn the machine off, um, a lot of people will turn it off and de-steam. It's great to take pressure out of the machine, but I would advise getting a, a jug and actually doing it by the hot water tap. Because then you're emptying the whole boiler, everything's going to end up in here, it'll start to show out some steam, and then you can turn it off, and then you can de-steam as well. So that's just going to really maintain your element and your boiler long term. So with the hot water tap, there is a way you can check a little bit of health on your machine. Um, 
so you've got to use your hot water or you're going to lose your hot water totally um, because we are flushing all of those minerals out they've got to go somewhere and if you take your hot water tap off and you've got your little uh, little gauze in here well, there's not too much in this one here but you can see there is a little bit of a mineral build up um, this machine's actually already been cleaned um, and so that's just the remnants after cleaning that we've got in a boiler but if you go to say a machine that we haven't had a look at yet Okay, so this one hasn't actually got a lot in there, so he's probably not using his hot water tap a lot, but you can start to see all of this build up that's happening. Okay, so that's happening inside your boiler. Now, we know that's really bad in this machine because it's already coming out the fittings, but essentially I don't think he uses his hot water tap enough. So definitely um, have a look and see what's happening, and that'll give you an idea. You might need to do a descale on your machine to get all that mineral content out. So the next thing is the brewing head. You may have a lever arm like this, or a paddle on a linear mini, um, or you may have a, a big pull down lever. It doesn't really matter which lever um, or activation method you have, you've still got your brew chamber. So that brew chamber is gonna get um, a lot of those um, issues from minerals in their head as well, but it's also gonna get the coffee oils from when you're brewing. So um, we do find a lot of people forget to use chemical to clean their head. So you've got to go and invest in some sort of um, cleaner. Um, there's always great instructions on the bottom here. Um, and you need a blind basket to be able to force that chemical back up through your head. What we find a lot is people um, say that they clean it. And I guess we're a bit of a, a dentist because we can see what's happening really easy. And people say, oh, I clean it once a week or once a month. Um, those time frames always change. So what I recommend is every time you put a new kilo of coffee in your machine, before you do that, you should go and use your chemical. And that's gonna make sure that you are maintaining that machine ready before you're about to make um, great coffee with your new fresh beans. Um, it'll done, be done regularly and it's really gonna avoid um, some, some ordinary tastes that are gonna happen in that coffee, um, but also stop it, all the oils going back up into this head and causing other issues moving forward. So I want to show you what a new um, seal looks like um, and shower screen um, versus one that we haven't had a look at yet. Now, if you don't know how to take your um, seal and shower screen out, um, this is a standard E61 head. It's pretty similar. So if we can pop down in under here. Okay, and this one doesn't have a screw in it, so we know it's a, just a, a, um, a levering out. A little short stubby flathead screwdriver on the edge of the basket. And if we leave up one side, and then lever the other, you'll be able to get the seal and the shower screen out together. Okay, so this is a new one. Um, so that's what it should look like. No coffee oils, all these holes nice and opened, and we've got a nice um, spongy seal. So if you were to take that out and it cracked, um, you'd know that that seal is really hard. Now just to show you one that um, we haven't had a look at yet, it can be a bit trickier to get out Whoop, there we go so firstly on the bottom if you have a look you can see there is obviously a lot of coffee and it's all around that seal and then if you have a look on the inside there's actually like a an oil or the tar that's just caking everything up it's like it's just so hard it's almost carbonized and uh, you definitely can't see through that so the water's not going to come evenly onto your coffee puck that's going to affect the extraction but also that that stinks that's what's going to be the taste of your espresso so to fix this you've got to use more chemical more regularly to fix this side you've got to use a grip brush now if it's still in the packet in your box that's a problem if your tooth your you know toothbrush at home or your um, group cleaning brush still looks new like that, it's a problem as well. It needs to look like a shaggy dog. And that means that you're actually cleaning right in underneath where your handle locks in, in the channel. And you're also cleaning the shower screen and all the way around that seal. So that's gonna increase the life of your seal, give a much better taste to your coffee as well. Um, so yeah, make sure you get that uh, group brush and really clean your machine well. Another common thing that happens is people say their steam tap is leaking. And when we get the machine in, it's actually up here 
where it's leaking and it's right between the top nut and the bottom nut. It's not leaking underneath or it's not leaking out the steam tip. So what that is, whoops, don't, don't knock handles off your bench. So what it is, is simply this, you can hear this one squeaking, okay? And that is because the grease um, has gone in the little ball joint and it's moving around. It essentially grips, acts like a spanner and actually just undoes that nut. And so the steam comes through and comes straight out between the two, two nuts there. So you can fix that yourself by just tightening that up. But if you've got a leak under here, you would need a new gasket or a seal. Um, if you're handy and you've got some food grade grease, you could just take that off when your machine is totally depressurized with no steam um, and then put a bit of grease in there and that will fix that, that squeak as well. Um, so that's a real common one. The other one is losing steam pressure and they haven't cleaned the tip. So you should be able to remove them quite easily and you've got your little holes on the bottom there. You can use a toothpick just to poke those out and make sure you give it a nice clean and have a look in from the side there. So keeping that clean will give you um, a nice good steam pressure as well. Um, you don't let the milk suck back up. So when you finish your frothing, just pull that jug out a bit quicker and that's really gonna help the steam from, um, you know, keeping the milk out of the actual uh, steam wand. It can create a vacuum and, and suck it back up and that's gonna cause more issues up in your tap. So then we've got the group handles. Um, a lot of people forget to take the baskets out of handles. Um, it's quite easy. You can just use a little flathead screwdriver and, and pop it in and pop your baskets out. I'll get that one in a second. Um, and it should look nice and clean and stainless. Uh, over time, that um, chrome coating can actually disappear and end up being a brass, and that's fine. So that's what we want them to look like. Um, you may need your basket wire to be changed if the basket pops out really easy. Um, it's only a, a dollar or so, or quite a cheap part. Um, but if you've got a handle that's looking like this, where you can see a lot of that, that coffee tar and oils that are in there, um, that's still gonna taint the flavor of your espresso. Um, if you look down your hole there as well, if you can see anything building up, a bit hard to see that one. Um, obviously, it's not gonna flow out into your cup well. And as it's coming out your two spouts here as well, making sure that it's flowing nicely. That's gonna help the flavor of your coffee, but also maintain your group handles as well. Um, if they get loose, you can put a bit of thread tape on there and just tighten them back up quite easily. It's a pretty easy thing. Or if you've got a bit of Loctite, pop it on and just sit it on a bench flat. And once that goes off, um, you'll be okay to, to reuse those handles. So the last thing I wanna cover is the actual machine and what it's telling us is happening. And when should I take it to a workshop? So you've got two gauges. The first one is over here, which usually goes from zero up to about four bar. This is your steam pressure or your boiler pressure. Um, so it's, it's got a green section, which is where we want it to be sort of stopping. On this one, it's about 1.1 in the pressure. If this needle is anywhere above here, like if it's hitting twos, two and a half, threes, you're most likely gonna be seeing a little bit extra steam coming out of the top of the machine. That's the boiler release safety valve going off. That's a real concern. So I would be taking it straight to a service technician straight away. Don't try and keep making coffee on it. Um, all it takes is that safety valve to stop and you've got an explosion of a uh, pressure valve. So you don't, you don't want that happening. So if it's sitting always around that 1.1, 1.2 on most machines, that's pretty standard. It's great. But if it's going crazy, bring it straight in, um, turn it off and uh, the tech will be able to fix that for you. The other side is your pump pressure. So usually we're running machines around nine bar. Some of these domestic machines run a little bit higher they might go up to 10 or 11, um, so that's fine. Um, but if you've got that gauge um, not getting pressure, that means your pump isn't actually working, whether it's a vibration or a rot rotary pump, um, that can be an issue, because if it's not gonna get water into the boiler, the element will um, could actually burn out dry because there's no water in there. Um, or if it's vibrating a lot, the gauge, you've got something that's wrong. So your pressure to your head is not going to be um, even and give you a great espresso. So I'd be bringing it in to get that fixed for sure. Um, then if there's any other leaks, any water that's dripping out the machine or steam or condensation in gauges, there identifies that something inside that machine has broken. It could be a little silicon hose or just a copper pipe or, or anything. So something's wrong. So leaks, moisture, excess steam, just bring it straight into your service workshop and they'll be able to help you out. 
If your lever is a bit squeaky, I would also bring that in too because you do need to grease that up. There's a cam in there which is just brass on brass and it's going to wear out and you'll be up for a whole new cam other than just getting a bit of grease and fixing it up. So there's a bunch of stuff that will give you an idea of how to look after your machine. If you need to learn how to clean your machine better, your group head, we've got another video. We'll leave a link below for you. So check that out. And if you've got any other questions, hey, shoot us a comment. We'd love to answer them for you. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.